It's January 3rd in 2021 and we're celebrating sun return by beginning to propagate plants again. We have a couple different options in plant propagation. One is the careful methodical method of working in the greenhouse underneath lights and planting seeds and planting cuttings in the uh, special sand beds. But another option is to work with volunteers. And so today's video is going to look at the uh, propagation of wild lettuce, that's the Lactuca virosa, by means of volunteers from outside. But as with any horticultural enterprise and really any human enterprise, we have to do something before we can do anything else. And so this kind of uh, recursive loop of activity is the bane of human existence or we can just chalk it up to one more thing to do before we can accomplish what we set out to do in the first place. So I'm making a little potting soil here. I have coir, I have sand and compost and I'm mixing them up through a half inch screen to get out the lumps and I'm going to put in a little bit of highly draining material which is uh, pumice that's a horticultural pumice which comes from Eastern Oregon 3 8 inch minus in order to make a complete potting soil for the propagation of our wild lettuce. And we're going to pull this. Okay, so there are the lumps that are not going to be included. Those are hard for little seedlings to send their roots into. And this here is the finished potting soil. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a mix with the shovel to start with. Make sure that my pumice is incorporated. And then I'm going to use it to fill a deep flat that has some cells. There we go. And this is what we'll put our volunteer wild lettuce seedlings into, ultimately. You fill it up and then you give it a little bit of a bounce and that brings the material down and firms it up and then you finish out. And if you don't do that extra bouncing step then eventually the soil will work down inside the flat and uh, the plant won't have as much room to throw its root. So that's why you firm it down like that. Okay, now that we've filled our flat, let's go outside and find the wild lettuce. So a little bit about wild lettuce and why we would be working with wild lettuce. Wild lettuce is a little bit difficult to start from seed. It germinates well in the cool soils of the fall after it falls from the mother plant and it germinates readily in cool soils in other places when you plant it. But if you plant it in standard greenhouse conditions, you might not get much results because over about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, the seed uh, doesn't, doesn't germinate, it requires cool soils for germination, which is why it's an ideal candidate for uh, propagating by volunteers. So this was a place last year where I planted some thyme plants, some mastic thyme in a row, and then when I ran out of thyme plants, I started with some of the wild lettuce plants, which I put in here, and then they were harvested in the fall for seed use, but they also deposited some of their seed down into the uh, substrate, and this here is all uh, reproduction of the 
wild lettuce, the Lactuca virosa, from those plants. Uh, how do I know that that's what it is? Well, this is where the mother plants were, and also this is, uh, uh, I know the plant. It looks like a lettuce seedling, and in fact, we could do a little test. We could dig one up. It has a bit of a tap root, and it looks pretty healthy, and then we can strip off the dirt and cut it, and immediately the plant exudes the white latex. So this kind of a test is very useful for making sure that you have your identity correct on uh, plants that are uh, pulled in from the field. Uh, each plant would be different. Wild lettuce produces lacticarium, the white latex. It is uh, rich in lactucin, which is the uh, sesquiterpene lactone that is very bitter, and uh, uh, th this is also called bitter uh, lettuce um, or uh, wild lettuce. Uh, then uh, uh, that sesquiterpene lactone is responsible for some of the activity, which is sudorific, uh, sleep-inducing, uh, hypnotic, uh, also is uh, uh, a pain reliever. And so that is, uh, that's why it's an exciting herb to use. And we actually do have a video that involves uh, how to extract the lacticarium from the mature plant. And so I refer you to that video. And uh, uh, also the uh, lacticarium is easily volatilized. So it's an ideal uh, herb for home production and commercial products may have lost much of their viability. So it's something that you can uh, make at home and use for pain control and sleep. And it's a, a gentle activity. It doesn't contain any of the protopene alkaloids, none of the poppy alkaloids. So it won't make you test positive for uh, taking opiates. And it is, even though they sometimes call it lettuce opium, it doesn't have any of the poppy alkaloids. Then it's one of the reasons to uh, work with plants in the field like this is because it's so much easier. You don't have to collect the seed. You don't have to clean the seed. You don't have to plant the seed. Nature has done it all for you. And these plants, uh, as they exist in the field, are natural and happy and frost resistant. They've, they've uh, gone through many frosts and they're still doing just fine. So uh, we want to uh, dig them up either in a clump or individually. And all I have is this knife that I found in my pocket. So I don't really uh, have the opportunity to dig up a whole clump, but I get the plant out of the ground and see what's going on here is it's come along with a, a clump of the native soil, which is actually very good because all the roots and there are little tiny roots that you can see extruding there. All the roots are held in place in a very natural form. And so uh, I want to make a hole in the cell in the flat that's about the same size as the ped of soil that comes along with the seedling. And I want to go deeply enough so that this tap root is not compromised. When you, when you transplant almost any plant or tree, never ever plant it so that you get a J root. A J root is a, a big problem. Always plant it so that that lower root, and if it's too long, cut it off. Always plant it so that that lower root goes straight down into the medium. So here we go. In it goes. And then we firm in around and push so that there are no air pockets in there because roots and air don't get along well. And the crown of the, of the start is right there at the surface of the flat. And then when, you're, when, uh, when you've gotten that far, then you're going to need a little extra dirt. And I'll pull a little extra dirt out of this cell here, and I'll fill in around there, and push it till it's at the center of the cell. And make sure that I don't cover the leaves. The leaves photosynthesize, don't they? And plants eat light. So I don't want to cover the leaves. I want to leave the leaves aerial, and I want to make sure that the root is buried straight down in. 
confirmed around. And then one little trick that I often use, I just blow off that extra dirt that's come right at the crown of the plant because that's where the new leaves are coming out. And you don't want that to be excluded by, uh, by extra dirt. So that's basically the process. Now I'm going to go for the, the next one. I'll come an extra cell over so that you can see it a little bit more easily. And I'm using my knife as a dibble to make a hole right down inside. And we'll get our next seedling out. I'm not choosing the biggest ones because they're going to have a root system that's bigger than the pot. So here comes the next one. Remove the necrotic tissue, the leaves from the side. And this one has more of a tap root, which is actually truncated by my knife, but I've also got hair roots coming out. And that's something that you really need to look at in terms of uh, a healthy transplant is that it has the hair roots because the hair roots are what feeds the plant. The tap root holds it in and goes deep for water, but the hair roots actually work with the nutrients and pull nutrients, minerals, into the plant tissue. So again, we firm it in, fill, tamp, and this one doesn't need to be blown off because it doesn't have any soil adhering to the crown. And here we go again. Then as you're doing this work, you know, you can watch your mind and think positive thoughts. Get rid of any negative thoughts. Think about the mother plants be an appreciation for the mother plants. Think about how someone will eventually use this plant to make medicine and that the medicine will be good, strong medicine and help people avoid pain and, and sleep well. Those are some of the secrets of the medicine maker and it starts out in the field right where you begin to propagate and moves all the way in through the drying process and the grinding process and the tincturing process. If you can keep all that in mind, then it just continually feeds the plant with more healing power. I don't feel bad about pulling them out of nature because frankly, the rototiller is going to go down this row later on to clean up these perennials that we've got. And so most of them will be wasted anyway. So we're actually saving plants patterns. There are always such amazing patterns in nature and you can see the, that we're beginning to establish a triangular pattern here. And triangles in, in plant propagation are very powerful geometry. So uh, this gives a maximum amount of area for growth and development of seedling. Here's a really good one. Now, since these are already acclimatized to cold and frost and rain and maybe even a bit of snow, we can just go ahead and set the flat. Once it's planted, we can set the flat in an outdoor propagation area or in a cold greenhouse. This method is going to be very functional for people who live in warmer winter areas, zone six and up. If you live in a colder winter area, zone six and down, you're probably going to not be working in January, but working more towards uh, March, April, in the very early spring. And that's when you can find your uh, reproduction in the field and make use of those spontaneously reproduced plants in terms of uh, working up your herbal apothecary. This method works well with a lot of other plants as well. For instance, uh, I've, I will find uh, elecampane seedlings next to the elecampane mothers. I'll find motherwort seedlings next to the motherwort mothers. And so one of the magic aspects of working with uh, diverse medicinal herbs is that actually you just need to get one going and you can call it your mother plant. And at, after that, you can work with uh, volunteer seedlings from that plant or you can collect seed from that plant 
and continue to work it out. So this is, uh, this is known as a seed saver, friendly, open pollinated, native land race, medicinal herb propagation. And it is the basis for self-sufficiency in herbal medicine. From this point, I'm going to just move on and I hope you will too. Peace and love from Southern Oregon. Take care. I said it's, you know, really powerful geometry. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, your tripod. Your tripod is a triangle. Why is that? Because it holds the camera most securely. And so same same with growing plants. Why why is the triangle most useful? Because it creates the most security.